everybody, Corey with Scale Model Inc. here. Hey, today we're, as you can probably already seen from the title of the video, we're doing a tutorial on how to paint a brick wall. And uh, this kind of started as a, a, a comment um, on one of Rob at Time Machine Scale Models uh, videos that I had left and he had responded with a hey do you have any would you share any tips on you know how to do uh, how to paint um, you know brick walls and because he's building a um, like a little diorama thing to I think to photograph his models and stuff that would represent a garage and he's going to have brick walls in it and what have you and I said yeah sure but probably be the easiest thing would be to do a, uh, a little tutorial on how I do it so that's what we're doing here um, so hopefully this will help um, a bunch of people not just Rob but um, uh, so yeah I mean Rob is in a I'll leave a link to Rob's channel. He's a awesome uh, car builder uh, and painter and stuff. Uh, I, I really enjoy his videos and stuff. So he's got some cool stuff that he's going to be um, using in his his uh, diorama there. So what I've got here is what I'm just going to use is these are one thirty fifth scale um, brick sections that I have assembled. And that's what I'm going to use to do the tutorial. Um, the red brick one is from Tamiya, and the gray one is uh, from uh, Italeria. So the Italeria one went together in a lot more pieces, and I kind of assembled it in a way to where, as you can see, where it's some are standing proud of each other and what have you. And I kind of wanted it to that to demonstrate you know a more of a little bit more of a worn out you know wall um, that's maybe got some issues and you can see some bigger cracks there and what have you because we're going to be using some different methods on you know doing the mortar and stuff so um, I'm basically just going to use acrylic paints here I'm going to be using a couple different ways for the mortar um, and I, I am going to be doing some uh, uh, probably some um, uh, enables like I would use, you know, my MIG ammo and AK stuff that I would use on some of my armor models. So uh, we're going to use a different couple different methods here. And the good thing is with this is we got four sides here to to work with. So um, that'll be kind of neat. Now I know to, to Rob here, I know that he's he primarily does 124th and 125th scale walls. You know, you wouldn't want to use anything like this for that. That's just too small. Um, what would be ideal, um, I, somewhere, I think it was on Amazon, I did see some 124th scale, and I believe it was foam. I don't think it was plastic. There were foam wall sections that were pretty cool looking. But other than that, what if it was me, what I would do is I would get some of the AK Interactive um, carving foam sheets. Um, it's really cool stuff. Um, and, you know, it comes in like a 8 by 10 sheet, you know. Um, and you can get it in a couple different thicknesses. But basically, you'd have to lay out your, you know, the lines of bricks like this. And, and then you go in and you would etch them with, you know, some kind of a modeling tool, whether it be a, you know, a, a cocktail stick, you know, but anyway, you want to, you want to actually carve the, the bricks out. And when you're done with that, it's not as hard as it sounds. It just takes a little bit of time to do it, but man, it makes a really cool brick wall. So anyway, um, I'm not doing foam on that, but I'm going to be using this plastic here. And so let's go ahead and get on with it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is, and um, you know, there's a hundred different ways, guys, out there to do this. Um, this is the way I do it. And been painting bricks and what have you, 
in models for a long time. Um, I did, uh, you know, HO and in scale model railroading for years, and this is pretty much how I did all that stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coat of primer on these, and I'm going to do it in black. I like to do, especially for an old wall, I like to start on a black background. So that's what we're going to do next, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. And basically working with four colors here. I've got yellow ochre, um, burnt sienna. This is the main color you're going to get your brick color from. Burn umber. And then I've got a little bit of a Vallejo uh, flat red here. And... What I've got here, this is the main color for the brick. It's that kind of like, a, I call it the warehouse brick. You know, it's like around here in the Midwest anyway. Um, the old, all the old uh, clay brick warehouses and stuff uh, from the turn of the century were all that real, you know, red, red russet brick. And... Uh, this should represent that pretty well. And then I've taken burnt sienna and I've mixed it with a little bit of brown or burnt umber. And then I've taken some burnt sienna and mixed it with some yellow ochre. Just a couple little shades. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. And this is going to be a pretty easy process. All I'm going to do is primarily just going to get brush on uh, this main color first. And, um, you know, I wanted to do this over black. I kind of like doing it, but it does, you do have to put a couple different um, coats on it. So I'm going to continue with this and I'll come back when I start mixing some other colors on here. All right, so uh, I got a nice flat uh, coat on here. Um, I didn't want to cover up all the black. I wanted some of the black to come through. Now I was going to do two two different uh, wall sections. I think I showed you that at um uh, wall section, but I'm not going to use that because I didn't realize it until I started coating that one that it's full of just ejector pin um, marks and it just looks terrible and it's, it's just not going to work. So I'm just going to do this one piece um, and that, but that, that should work just fine. So I've got, a nice even coat on here of the general brick color and now I'm just going to start adding in some different places a little bit more red just mostly um, red it's the burnt sienna is still in there but just adding some red I'm not going to cover every brick I'm just kind of All right. 
I'm going to hit this real quick with the blow dryer. And now I'm going to mix in a little bit of this yellow ochre color and start adding a few hints of that. Just going to kind of pick out different bricks. I think I want a little bit more yellow ochre in there. Yeah, that's a better color. Yeah. Hope everybody can see this, all right? Just randomly picking out some. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more of this and then we'll be back. So now I'm just doing the same thing with uh, burnt sienna with um, burnt umber mixed in with it and just doing Do a few more of these along the bottom because you know it's generally just dirtier along the bottom. And just kind of like Kind of see how that adding this uh, burn umber gives it kind of a more depth to the wall. All right, so I'm gonna do a bit more of this. And I'm going to let this dry. And then we're going to start. We're going to put the mortar in. All right. So here's, this is uh, what basically what we use for uh the mortar and the brick is just plain old spackling for, you know, for your walls. So what we're going to do is we're just going to smear this on here and get it all over in the cracks. And then we're going to go through a process of removing it. spread around so gets into all the cracks
not gonna need any more of that. And now we're just gonna go through a process here of wiping this off. So I'll be back, I'm gonna work on this a little bit and then I'll bring you back. All right, so after uh, using a damp rag, um, this is pretty much where we are. I think it looks pretty good. You can see the variations in it, and it's got that nice uh, kind of old-timey look to it. So now uh, we're pretty much, you know, to the end here, except for I'm going to add, going to do a little bit more weathering, and... I'm going to be using some Army Painter Strong Tone and some Dark Tone. Strong Tone's more brown, Dark Tone's more black. Um, and this is just going to give some of that, you know, gungy look that would be like in a garage or, you know, an old warehouse. <clears throat> Kind of knocks back that glaring white a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fade this up. Be darker on the bottom. And I made, I'm just kind of liking the, uh, the dark tone on this. And I may just go with that. I may not use any of the brown or tone. Tip it upside down here now and just kind of using more water here as we get to the top. And that's kind of what you end up with. Um, gonna hit this real quick with the dryer. white looking right in here.
so there you go. Um, you know, you could take this further. You can do more painting of individual bricks and just kind of a process of going back and forth. But I kind of like the way it looks right here. Um, just looks like an old brick wall. Uh, you could also do some additional work with like uh, your weathering powders and pan pastels and those kind of things. Um, on my railroad buildings, I used a lot of pan pastels on it and would uh, come in here in the bottom and use some different colors and, and uh, All right, so um, I wanted to do a little bit more work on here and I did decide to get my pan pastels out here. So these are really neat. They're very highly pigmented um, artist pastels. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I used, I used to use these a lot um, on my model railroad. So what I got here is this is the whole range of Burt Sienna. Um, and then this is a couple three of the raw umber, so I'm going to use that. This is a nice dusty, uh, the lightest of the burnt siennas, and then... this red iron oxide as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start on uh, applying some of this. And I just, I, what I didn't like was it, I maybe put a little bit too much of the dark in there. <sighs> and it got a little bit too dungeony looking. Get a little bit of this raw umber. These are very sticky. These uh, pastels are, they work great for this kind of thing. But I think you can see what uh, <clears throat> yeah, I really like that. Need to get a fluffy brush here. Now you can seal these with dull coat or something like that. Um, if it's gonna be something that's gonna be handled a lot, um, I probably would. But if it's something that's not gonna be handled much, it's just gonna basically be a static model sitting there, um, then I wouldn't. When you, when you do seal it, um, you pretty much have to go back and do a couple different applications 
because it does uh, kind of soak in there. It does seal it in there, but it also minimizes the effect. Yeah, I kind of like that. It looks a little bit more like a old wall. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope maybe it helped somebody out there. There's a hundred ways to do this kind of thing. Um, this is just the way I do it and have done it for a long time. Um, yeah, so uh, appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch you on the next one.